Let's talk about Enrique Alfano. He was a Camorra, uh, sort of a mafia group. I think it's actually older than the mafia group. They were active in Naples, where he was born and raised. He, the police called him, uh, to, explaining this to an American reporter from the New York Times, that he was a leader of Camorra in the sense that he was really more of a president of confederations of Camorras. He was the lead guy, so to speak. He had a lot of power, political clout, social clout. He had an enormous ego. In 1902, this French vaudeville singer who was world famous, her name was Eugenie Faure. She was performing at the Salon, Salon Margarita Cafe in Naples, and somebody broke into her dressing room, stole all her jewelry. She had to go on stage without it. This made international headlines. She was that big of a star. So she, it depends on who you talk to. She, Alfano says she contacted her. She says Alfano contacted him. And he says, I'll get on it. And the jewelry reappears. Most of the jewelry reappears. And now he's a national hero. But the police didn't buy that. They said he set up the whole thing. And they arrested him um, and threw him in jail. But he, they let it go. He also dabbled in politics, heavy-handed. Uh, his lead guy was this priest, Ciro Vitozzi. Vitozzi's guy was Giovanni Rappi. Giovanni Rappi worked directly under the priest. Giovanni did the dirty work. The priest told him what to do, and Alfana was in charge of all of them. In 1904, this guy, Count Vincenzo Fasci, ran for parliament, and they could control him. Alfano, all the Camorras could control him, and that's what they wanted. He was running against uh, an encumbered uh, socialist anyway. So, But anyway, they used heavy-handed tactics. Uh, they beat up the opposition. They, some people got knives. Other people disappeared. The uh, authorities did nothing because they really disapproved of the socialist candidate. But, you know, we did that in this country, too. I mean, uh, uh, Boston, it had, they had their gangs. Uh, God knows Tammany Hall had them. Chicago may have done it. I'm not really sure. Uh, but it, we did it, too. So anyway, they got, they charge uh, Alfano. He, he gets out. He goes, and a little while later, he's arrested for murdering this guy, Gennaro Cucolo, and his wife. According to Alfano, they were police informants, and he murdered them on June 6, 1906. The, poli the police believed that Gennaro Gocola was, was also a Komodo guy. He had certain, he had a lot of power, and they killed him. They took over his rackets. It's an old story. They jail Alfano and his boys for about 50 days, but the priest, Father Vitoza, who's called the guardian angel of the Camorra, comes in. He's, no, I can assure you this guy's not a killer and blah, blah, blah. So they let him go. And all, not only that, they had a, a, a regular police informer named Giacomi Escritori, uh, who, and he said, absolutely not. Al Alfonso didn't kill this guy. This guy, Gettino Amodi and Tomasino Di Angelis were the real killers. So the cops let Alfano and his boys go. But... This other guy, Gennaro Abatemaggio, I'm pretty sure I pronounced that right, Abatemaggio, Abatemaggio, who was a Camorra guy, and he was an informer, known informer for the police. He's in jail in Naples, and he said, no, no, that's none of that is right. Cucola was killed um, because he was suspected of being a police spy, but it was Alfana who actually had a meeting in a restaurant and ordered him killed. So the police go to get Alfano. He takes off. He leaves. He lives in Rome for a while. The police are tearing the country up and down for him. He hops on a boat um, from Marseilles, France, and he sails into New York in March of 1907. He said he was a ship's member, uh, a stroker. He was a guy down in the bottom who was keeping the fires going to keep the ship moving. He opens, he moves to Mulberry Street, 108 Mulberry Street. It's still there. And he lived upstairs on the second floor, and in the basement he had, of course, a gambling den. He became a target of this magnificent policeman named Sergeant Joe Pistrono. Pistroni had uh, the, the Italian squad. He was a brave, brave policeman, uh, uh, incredibly honorable man. Uh, they eventually killed him when he went to Italy to get more information. They murdered him in Italy. Um, I think he was set up, so do a lot of people. Petrosino uh, really felt that, Officer Petrosino really felt that Alfano was trying to rebuild a Camorra here in New York City in the United States. So on 
April 17, 1907, Petrosino and his guys, uh, they were rough. They were all Italian-Americans. It was very rare to have an Italian-American policeman dealing with Italian-American issues. The New York City Police Department was basically Irish. Um, Petrosino understood the details of the Italian culture. You really get a chance to read uh, something about it. His name is Sergeant Joseph, P-E-T-R-O-S-I-N-O, a hell of a guy. He raids uh, Alfonso's apartment on Mulberry Street, and he arrests him, and he drags him off to jail. And Alfonso thinks he's going to try all sorts of fancy footwork to stay in the United States, but <laughs> just, you know, takes him, throws his ass on a boat that's headed for Lahar, France. It was the first one he could find. And there, uh, Alfonso's picked up by the Italian police. There's no goofing around, you know. So they've, they've got him on trial for the Cucolo murders in 1909. Funds to defend him poured in from the United States from a series of restaurants uh, in New York, Neapolitan restaurants, that they were either uh, probably extorting money from these guys. They ended up with 50,000 lira, $10,000 in a defense fund. You know, 1909, 10,000 bucks is serious, serious cash. So, uh, he goes to trial. It's a huge, huge trial. Gets a lot of attention. Uh, all in all, it involves 27 Camorra bosses. They lose. They all lose. They all get jailed. Uh, a total of 354 years in prison. Uh, Rappe, who worked for the priest, got 30 years. Alfano got 30 years. And the priest got seven years. But he managed to weasel his way out of that. In 1927, 15 years later, the government... Um, tried to withdraw the case because their informant, this guy Abatamaggio, said that, well, I lied. None of that stuff is true. It, it didn't really work. They went back and forth. Anyway, they kept Alfano in prison. He was a shoemaker in prison, which is what his father did for a living. Uh, they released him in 1934. He served 27 years. And as far as anyone knows, he simply vanished. I checked up and down on Ancestry.com. I, I couldn't find any proof of him living after 1934. He could have slipped back into the United States. He would have used a different name.